So I finally got my inverter in. This is the Ames Power 10,000 watt split phase pure sine wave inverter and charger. Puts out 240 volts on two legs with the addition of a neutral for US customers so you can pull both 120 and 240 from it. I wasn't planning on ordering an inverter until the summer but this deal cropped up on Amazon. This unit is brand new but I guess it was damaged in their warehouse. Um, so they had it substantially discounted. I actually got it for about half the price is what a new unit sells for. It, when it came on the pallet, it looked like the pallet was, like the inverter had slid off the pallet or something. I'm not quite sure what happened, but there was also some ding marks, a few dents, some scratches on it. Uh, so they're mostly cosmetic damages, and they shouldn't affect the way the unit works at all. You can see this rail's bent a little bit back here. But I saved, I would say, about $1,100 off what it would have costed brand new. So I feel like I got a good deal. Um, I haven't tested it yet, so once I finish going through a review of it, I will plug it in and we'll see if it works. One of the hardest parts of picking out an inverter for me has been the lack of proper split phase inverters for U.S. customers. Sure, there's some expensive ones out there like the Outback and the MagnaSign, but those run about two, three thousand dollars for a, a four to five kilowatt inverter. So really, I would need two of those, and you're talking six grand, seven grand, and that's just out of my price range. And the other thing is. Some of these that exist, there's very few reviews on them, and the reviews that do exist, people buy the inverter and they'll plug it in and say, okay, this inverter works. They won't give you an overview of what, what features it has, they won't open it up and show you the cabling inside, make sure it's proper gauge wiring, stuff like that. They'll claim they put out 10,000 watts and they'll use like uh, 14 or 16 gauge wiring on the inside. So first we'll take a look at the bottom of the unit. Uh, you'll see there's these two massive, uh, there's two big lugs in there where you connect positive and negatively to the battery. It is 48 volt. Over here we have plugs for a temperature sensor and a remote monitor port. The green plug we have here, you can have this unit actually when the batteries are dead and the AC is off, you can have it automatically start a remote generator. So it's like backup backup power. This switch controls things like the low battery, trip point, AC input, power save mode, your frequency whether it's 50 or 60 hertz, and then uh, whether the battery or the AC has power. I'm not going to be running this connected to the AC, the AC input. It's going to be running battery only, so I'm not really concerned about the charger or that portion of it. Over here we have two circuit breakers. This is the input power. Um, it takes 240 volts in, two separate legs. This is an 80 amp breaker. And then over here we have the output breakers. They look like either 50 or 60 amps, I'm not sure. And then down here we have the wiring block we'll where you will connect your, your AC input and AC output. You got a ground, AC input has two hots, so a hot leg one, hot leg two. Your AC output, you have a hot leg one, hot leg two, and then your neutral. So across the two, uh, hot one and two, you'll get 240 volts. Across either one of the hots and the neutral, you'll get 120 volts for AC. Pump input, not quite sure what that is, I'll have to check the manual for that, and then your grounding block. On the right side of the unit, we have a simple GFCI outlet, 120 volts. This will come in handy for plugging in your test equipment or any equipment you intend to run with the inverter. On the top of the unit, there's two very large fans. This is where the transformer sits, so these fans will ensure adequate cooling. On the top of the inverter, we just have some information regarding charging the various battery types. And then we have a switch here for the battery type selector. So you set this switch based on what battery type and operation you want over here. I'll be leaving the charger disabled, so that's fine. And then we have some... LED indicators, we have power saver mode, overload alarm, over temperature, unit alarm, float charge, fast charge, inverter, and AC mode. And then just an LCD display down here. Um, this is where you turn the inverter on, off, or power saver auto. And the power saver mode is kind of interesting. Based on what the uh, booklet says, it sounds like the inverter flicks on every so many seconds to check if there's a load, and if not, it shuts back off. If there is a load, it'll start up. It's kind of interesting, but I don't know if I'll be using it considering some of my loads are going to run 24-7. So there's always going to be a load on it. So that's about it for the quick overview of the outside. I'll go ahead and take the cover off and then show you what's on the inside. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the inside now. Before I want to get started, I, want to, I do want to say a safety reminder. You should never ever under any circumstances open an inverter like this. There can be some serious shock hazards inside, which could cause personal injury or death. Um, it is not something to mess around with. So the first thing I noticed is the massive split phase transformer. You can see the inputs here. Uh, I'm going to guess that's probably 48 volts at that point, alternating. Um, and then the outputs come out in these two wires, the neutral, uh, leg one and leg two. 
all of the output wiring does appear to be 8 gauge uh, doubled up conductors. So you can see them over here as well on the, this is the input breaker and then this is the output breaker. They're just doubled up um, like one, like two. I still haven't figured out what that pump input block is for, but the pump input is tied to the secondary transformer here. I'm almost thinking it's for like a water pump or something, but it says pump input, not pump output. So maybe somebody else can explain to me what that's used for, but um, that's slightly thicker wiring. It looks like about 6 gauge wiring. Uh, here's the terminal lugs where you connect your uh, battery cables, positive and negative. There is a torque spec in the instruction manual, which I'd recommend following. Then that comes in on these two bars. They're probably about steel. I don't think they're aluminum. They're pretty stiff. So your positive goes over here, and then your negative goes down in here. I do like that it's not that these inputs are not wiring because that is going to take, you know, 10,000 watts at 48 volts is is what 200 amps. And on a lot of these inverters, especially the ones that are China, you see real thin wiring coming on these battery terminals, from the battery terminals into the motherboard. And that's one thing I am happy to see is that it's nice thick. Uh, it's not even wiring; it's just thick bars. I'm not an expert at what I'm looking at, but it appears to be high quality components. I don't see like any improper solder joints, cold solder joints, they all look done well. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but down there is all the transistors lined up. Uh, they're on both sides. There's some here, I'm guessing for phase one, and then phase two is on the other side of the board. And there is some massive capacitors in there. So that's about it from the inside. Mostly I just wanted to check out the wiring and see what it was like. Here's the instruction manual it came with. Uh, I did expect a little better from an inverter that is this this costly and this large, uh, but I guess it, it does come back to it is it is a Chinese unit. So there are spelling and grammar mistakes, which I was disappointed about. And then one thing that I was confused on is the warranty, because this card it comes with here says you have a full two-year warranty from the date of purchase. But then in the same booklet it came with, it's, it says you have a full one-year warranty from date of purchase. So I'm not quite sure if it's a one-year warranty or a two-year warranty. So here's just a quick look at the specs page. Uh, my unit is the 10,000 watt version. And then for the DC section, it says multiply everything by four to get your numbers for 48 volts because it's given in 12 volts. This instruction book covers several different models. And then over here is some information on the bypass and the protection. So your voltage trips and those ratings. So yeah, that's about it. I'm going to get this closed back up and then hopefully in a few days I'll plug it in and give it a test. This does weigh close to 150 pounds, maybe 160 pounds, so it's going to take two people to lift. Uh, but until then, if you have any questions, let me know. If anybody knows what this pump input and this uh, secondary transformer is for, I'd love to know. So please let me know in the comments below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.